Good day, my schoolers, and this is my school channel. My name is Abiola. For this video lesson, we are going to consider the concept of geometry. So we are going to look into several concepts attached right to geometry. You know, you want to see that geometry is actually the study of shapes. So you are going to consider the 3D shapes, the 2D shapes, you know, and other theorems as we progress in this video. So do not go anywhere. Stay with us and we will be right. Back to my school YouTube channel. So right there we have geometry. Geometry, the branch of mathematics consigned with the properties of and the relationship between points, lines, planes, and figures. So if you recall that statistics actually deals with data. So analyzing data, collecting data, organizing data. So right here we have geometry that deals with shapes. You know, everything that makes up shapes. So you are looking at lines, um, points, planes, and figures, of course. So let's go to the next slide. Yeah, so we still have another angle to this concept. Say so the branch of mathematics that deals with shapes and their sizes, you know, measurements and dimensionalities. Okay, so a set of uh, axioms, postulates, and theorems determine the specifics of a geometry. So basically, as we move further in this lesson, right, we are going to consider several theorems, you know, that govern how we walk around uh, these geometrical shapes. All right, so you can see that some um, geometry deals with shapes. All right, so their sizes, their dimensions, their measurements, and what have you. So we have the next slide. Okay, so uh, when it comes to shape, you know, we have the solid shape and we have the plane shape. Or you can say the solid figures and the plane figures. Or you can call it, um, you can call the solid shapes, you can call them the 3D shapes, right? Then you can call the plane shapes your 2D shapes, okay? Or your 2D figures. So what is a solid figure? A solid figure is a three-dimensional figure. So you can see three-dimensional tells you that uh, it measures, right, in three directions, such as your length, you can see your height and your width. You can see that. So 3D shapes. So this is a typical example. So let's move to the next slide. Alright, so again we have another aspect to this. A three-dimensional three or 3D shape or solid is a shape that has length, which we regard as the depth. Okay? Uh, the breadth, which you can regard as the width. You know how wide it is. And the height. So you can see that. So it is made up of faces. So you have your surfaces. It has edges as well. These are your edges. You can see we have your corners or your vertices. So uh, actually the difference between your uh, your vertices and your edges. So you can see that at a, at a vertex, right, you can see that at least um, lines, more than two lines meet there, or at least two lines should meet there. Okay, let, let me just put it that way. So we have lines, several lines meeting there. So this is a vertex. You can see that now. So you can see your edge. Okay, just uh, part of it. So now, okay, and plane and plane of symmetry. So basically, a three D shape talks about three dimensions: your length, your width, and what you have here. Okay, so let's go ahead for the next slide. All right, so what are part of a solid figure? So we have the face. So you can see the face here. The face is the flat surface of a solid figure. Now you can see the vertex is the point where three or more edges of a, of a solid figure meet. So the vertex is sometimes called a corner. So you can see like I identified earlier, I mentioned two. But if you want to be very, very specific and accurate, so you can actually deal with three. So you can see that three uh, points actually meet right there. So you can see it's a point where three or more edges meet. So you have an edge here, you have an edge here, you have the edge coming from here meeting here. So that marks a vertex. Do you see that now? So you can see here, we have the edge here, we have an edge here, we have an edge here. Meeting right here, this is another vertex. Alright, so the edge is a line segment where two faces of a solid figure meet. So you can see, this is an edge right here. So these are the basic parts of a solid figure or a 3D shape. We move for the next slide. 
All right, so we have some examples of um, solid figures or solid shapes. We have your cube, right? It has 12 edges and 8 factors. Of course, we can pause this video to actually assimilate these um, details. We have your cuboid, you have your pyramid, you have your cylinder, you have your cone, and you have your sphere. All right, so these are just um, examples, very good examples of solid or 3D shapes. We we'll move for the next slide. Yes, then we have your plane shapes. All right, or you can call it some um, physically flat shapes. Okay, so a shape, a plane shape is a shape in a plane, right, that is formed by curves, line segments, or both. So you can see some examples. These are some examples. You can see this. This is a triangle, right? This is a right angle triangle. You can see we have this here. All right, so we have more examples to actually buttress this concept. The next slide. Yes, so we can also call the plane shape, we can call it the two-dimensional shape or the 2D shape. So in geometry, a two-dimensional shape has two dimensions which we refer to as the length and the width, but no thickness. Do we see that now? So let's move ahead. Yes, so we have examples right here. So we have triangle, we have square, we have rectangle, we have the trapezoid, we have the parallelogram, you can see we have the rhombus, we have pentagon. So uh, you can see for this polygon, right, you have pentagon, we have your hexagon, we have your nonagon, octagon, and what have you. So we have your circle, we have your oval. A sphere is not a 2D shape. Please take note of that. So we have the next slide. Yes, so flat shapes are also called plane shapes. So we have called them plane shapes. We are now calling them flat shape. We also call them 2D shapes. All right, so we have examples right here again. The next slide. Yes, so there, this is just a basic um, diagrammatic comparison between plane and solid shape. So we see the examples right here. Then we see examples of solid shapes. So you can see what we have here. So you can see that sphere is actually a solid shape. The next slide. Yes, so we just try to do a kind of um, run through. So we have a line, right? We have a two dimensional shape, we have a three dimensional shape. To so just show you that, okay, this is where we're actually coming from and the journey so far, so well. Yes, the next slide. Yes, yeah, so we have real life examples of 3D shapes. All right, I know this is just like a background framework for us, a background or framework for us. So we have your football, right? It's a 3D shape. We have this. Yeah, I think uh, this is your Rubik uh, cube, if you want to call it that, your Rubik's cube. You have your bucket, then you have your book here, yeah, probably a textbook to put. Yes, let's go for the 2D shapes. So real life examples of 2D shapes, you know, your currency, you know, yes, to put. Then you have your chessboard, right? This, uh, this is a pizza, a cut from a pizza, I guess, right? So this is your stop sign. Right, so after going through count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight sides. Right, you have your circle, okay, then you have your hooks. So, these are very good examples. Yes, the next slide. So, we now go to what we call angle, right? It's actually incomplete when you talk about geometry and you do not refer to angle properly or in details. Right, so what are angles? Angles are formed by two rays or lines, all right, that begin at the same point or they share the same end point. So if you want to form an angle, you are talking about two lines that actually have the same starting point or they actually end at the same point. So that is what marks or make an angle. So the point at which these two rays or two lines meet or they intersect is what we call the vertex. So this is the vertex here, you know, the point where they actually meet. All right, so sometimes you can even, you can have an extension like this, right? We still, but whichever way, the point, there's, there's a point of meeting or a point of um, diverging, right? So that's where we have it right there. So the angle measures the amount of turn between two arms or sides of an angle, and you can measure your angle in degrees or in radians, right? We know that very well. So what are the types of angles? Basically, we have your zero angle, that is okay measuring degrees you have your heart twisting angle that is uh, from between 0 to um, 90 right it's less than 90 then you have your right angle right your right angle is actually angle 90 degree you have your obtuse angle your straight angle which is angle 180 you can refer to it as a supplementary angle you have your reflex angle 180 to 360 but it's not up to 360 it's more than 180 but not up to 360 and you have your complex angle or your full angle which is 360 degrees the next slide all right so what are the parts of an angle so you can see we have the arm 
right? We have two arms or two sides. Or you can refer to this as your lines, right? This is the point where they actually meet or the point where they diverge from. So you can see this right here. So you can see in between these two lines or these two arms, you can find or an angle has been formed. We see that right here. So the next slide. Yes, so basically, you know, same representation, we tell you about types of angles. So like I mentioned earlier, we have acute angle. You can see it's less than 90. 90 is somewhat around there. We have 90 degrees, which is um, um, the right angle, right? Uh, right angle, right, right angle, right here. We have obtuse angle is bigger than 90, but it is less than 180. So that is obtuse. Then we have a straight angle, or the supplementary angle, which is 180 degrees. We have the complete angle, which is 360 degrees. Then we have the reflex, bigger than 180, but not up to 360. Let's see broader views regarding angles. Yes, so um, some will still tell us about complementary angles. So what are complementary angles? Complementary angles are angles, uh, when you measure them, you know, they add up to 90. So when adjacent, the angles form a right angle triangle, or a right angle, forms a right angle rather. You know, we are so accustomed to right angle triangle regarding Pythagoras theorem. So we're not going there right now. All right, so you can see this. So complementary angles, they actually add up to 90 degrees. So let's see another kind of angle. So we have the supplementary angle, and these are angles that actually add up to 180. So angle on a straight line. So uh, whatever um, whatever amount of time or or sides or splits or angles formed on this straight line, everything should add up to 180 degrees. You can see the important notes right here. The next slide. Yes. So uh, basically, we now talk about angles formed because of the presence of a parallel line, OK? And this is actually not really workable if we don't have a line running across this parallel line. So this line running across, then we refer to it as a transversal. So angles in parallel lines are angles that are created when two parallel lines are intersected by another line. So this is the line that we refer to as a transversal line. So you can see right there we have a parallel, we have two parallel lines. No parallel lines, they're actually lines that do not meet no matter how far they go. All right, so you can see two parallel lines. So right here, this is angle 180. So that means if I had x to y, I should get 180 degrees. The same thing happens at this side. So uh, this running um, through or intersecting these two parallel lines, that's a transversal. So from this expression or this diagram, we can actually form different kinds of angles. So basically when this happens, uh, you know, some presentation will tell you that eight kinds of angles are formed. But let's explore as many as possible. The next slide. Yes, so uh, we have basically, we have the corresponding angle, we have the alternate angle, we have the co-interior angle, right? Or so some refer to it as the halide um, angle, right? So this uh, co-interior, for full, I can call it the consecutive um, angle. So it could be interior, it could be exterior. Uh, for alternate, it could be interior, it could be exterior. Don't worry, I'll explain all of this as we move further in this video. So you can see this right here. So look at uh, this very diagram. We have corresponding angles. So corresponding angle are equal, alternate angle are equal, but consecutive angle, they are not equal. They are supplementary, that is, they add up to 180 degrees. So A to E, uh, this is a um, corresponding angle, you can see. Um, D, H corresponding now. Okay, let's explore more together using the slides. Following? Yeah, so we kick off with the corresponding angles. So corresponding angles occur when the transversal line crosses two parallel lines, right? So the pairs of angles formed on the same side, take note of that, on the same side of this transversal, right? So look at this, and they are the same thing. So you can see this, right? So you can see this on the same side of it. So one is inside, one is outside. You can see one is outside, one is inside. All right, so you can spot it using the F shape. So you can see basically I can draw my F shape. You can see it here, right? My F shape right here. All right, so you can see the same thing happens here. So you can see it is highlighted here with another color, right? So that is how you use um, this kind of identification for your corresponding. So for your corresponding angle, you just draw an F. Or, but if you can use your instinct or your intuition, of course, to get it, it's very easy to spot. Right, you can do that, but this is just an additional clue. Right, the next slide. Yes, yeah, so we still see another aspect to this. So the transversal is a line that crosses at least two other lines. So when the transversal crosses parallel lines, 
congruent angle are formed. So when you say angles that are congruent, that means angles that are equal. All right. So we have um, some examples of congruent angles, you know, like your alternate angles, you know, they are the same thing. So that means they are congruent. Your corresponding angles, they are congruent as well. All right. So let's, so you can look for letter F. So basically you can see this. This looks something that is written upside down. Of course, but you can still take it like this. You can see it. So the same thing. You can see corresponding, corresponding, corresponding. So you can see the F. So here it is turned upside down. You can see. Here it is facing the other side. But it's still the same thing. So that's your corresponding angle. And they are equal. That means they are congruent. Here's the next slide. So we have the alternate angles. So let me mention this again. Right? Alternate angles can be interior, okay, and they can be exterior. So generally, let's just see this. Alternate angles are angles that occur on opposite side of a transversal line. So remember that your corresponding angle occurs on the same side, you know, on the same side of that transversal line. But alternate now on the opposite side. So if you start here, you can see, you see it's on the other side of this, and they are the same thing, okay? They are congruent as well, so you can see this this so basically what we have seen here is a very good example of alternate interior angles i will tell us why as we move further in this video so how do we identify or spot an alternate angle you use the z drawing so for f we for f that is for corresponding so so much more are loaded in this video and you just need to have access to them how do you do this very very simple so you just click on the link in the description below this is going to get you to the my school website right there you get to subscribe for this video lesson you have access to this full content and several other content that are well educative and well explained so do not go anywhere and do not forget that you need to hit the like button for us click on the subscribe button and always tap or bell notification for you to get alerts immediately we upload the next video content just for you